Is it fair to say next JS? I don't want to say ship fast, go ship it. And I got like a massive shitstorm for that. Getting involved with the community. And I made some mistakes. That's fantastic. Doing open source because you want it to look good on your CV. Welcome to another React Advanced interview. I'm Jack Harrington, and with me is Dominic from the React Query team. Hi. Hi. So glad to be here. That you're here. So why don't you tell us a bit about your background and how you got involved with React Query? Yeah, my name's Dominic. I'm a software engineer uh, based in Vienna. I got into open source um, during the pandemic when there wasn't really anywhere to go. So uh, we were already using React Query and also Table uh, from the Tanstack um, at work. And I thought, you know, it might be a good time to um, join the Tanstack Discord and give back to the community by answering a couple of questions, maybe see how I can help out. And I did that for about six months. Like I did nothing but answer questions. Um, that's a great way to learn the framework. That's a great sure. way to, to, learn, to learn a library and the framework because at the beginning, I thought, yeah, I know these answers, right? Because I've seen the questions before or the struggles before. But then there were questions where I didn't know how I would solve these, right? So I thought, okay, I can either not answer it or I can look into the library, see how it works, try it out, make a code sandbox reproduction or whatever, and then try to help people um, and look more into the library. And people are actually very grateful about someone helping them that way. So there's an instant gratification. If you help someone, they're like super happy. That got me into learning how the library works. And it took about six months before I actually made a, a code contribution uh, to React Query. That's fantastic. So that sounds like a really good journey for folks to follow, because I think a lot of folks are thinking about ways to get into the software engineering field. And one of the common pieces of advice is to do open source. Yeah. And so following your journey of first getting involved with the community and then starting to get into the code. That sounds great. Yeah, I think doing open source because you want it to look good on your CV, maybe. I don't think that's the, the right motivation for open source. Okay. I think if you want to do open source, you should do it because you enjoy working with the community, enjoy doing something, I don't want to say the greater good, but for the community, right, um, to help them um, ship software easier. And if it's something that you're also using as a user, and you're enjoying working with that, then it's a good uh, library to, to contribute to. But yeah, it's, it's not always easy to get started with open source because code contributions to libraries, also React Query, are probably not the easiest thing to, to get started with. So yeah, if you take the slow path and try to understand things first, and you know, we're always very happy if, if people help out with answering questions or yeah. triaging issues or things like that, or even making our documentation better, right? Those are very valuable contributions in open source and it's not about the code alone. That's fantastic. Why don't you tell us a bit about your talk here and maybe as part of that introduction to React Query, I, there might be one or two people in the world in, of React who don't know what React Query is. <laughs> tell us about your, your talk. Yeah, um, so in my talk, I basically looked at my learnings from the last three and a half years of maintaining React Query because there were some things that I think React Query does really well in terms of uh, how the API is designed. Tenna did a great job at uh, thinking it through from the beginning. Um, and then I came along and I made some <laughs> rookie mistakes of uh, you know, thinking, this is a good idea, let's do that. And he was very like, trustful. He said, you know, if you think it's a good idea and we have the test coverage and you don't break things, just you know, go ship it. You know, it's, um, we, can, we can always iterate on it uh, in the, uh, later. And I made some mistakes, um, learned, learned some things the hard way. Um, and yeah, I wanted to share these with folks. So, so what's yeah. an example of a mistake you made? Well, uh, one example from the talk is where we added an API to invalidate queries to actually make sure that we can refetch a single page. Uh, we removed that later on because it didn't turn out so great. Um, biggest mistake I probably made with the change in version 4 of the internal state machine, where a query that's disabled is also in loading state, and I got like a massive uh, shitstorm for that. Um, <laughs> Kind of like, uh, yeah, so this was a big mistake because we had to actually properly fix it with the next major version. So it took us a bit of time to, to, to actually... Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the upgrade path to version 4 wasn't great. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> All right. You're also on the React router now? Yeah, I do contribute to the router a little bit, yeah. Fantastic. So what areas of the React router are you working on? Um, the router is still quite early. It's version uh, 1 right now, but it, in, in terms of maturity, right, if you look at query, I think query... The library itself is quite stable, very well tested, battle tested, if you will, right? Lots of people use it. The router is very well designed. If you look at what it does to state management for managing state in the URL, how you can subscribe to it, how it integrates with suspense, and obviously how it's done on the type level. Um, it's an insanely great library 
to, and we're also using it uh, already uh, in, in production. That said, there are some things that, that need just, you know, constant improvement. Like we need a lot more tests. This is something that when you, when you like, I don't want to say ship fast, but, you know, <laughs> but when you have a library and you're, you're working things out and then you make an initial version, you, know, you don't have all the edge cases figured out yet. You don't have them, them covered. But if the API design is right um, and the types are great, I would take that any day over a library that is, you know, might be very well tested, but you need to change things because things that you figure out in the future might not work right. for the users. But with the problems we have in the router right now, they're all relatively easily fixable at runtime or uh, with, the, with, the, with the API that we have. And I should be clear, I, I said the React router, I mean TanStack router, which is part oh, yeah. of the whole yeah. TanStack family, yeah. which is huge. I mean, there's Form in there now, and there's obviously Start, which yeah. is his, which is the, the TanStack competitor with, I guess, is it fair to say Next.js? Well, I think it's it's ambitious to say Next.js, obviously, but yes, in terms of what it wants to to cover or where it wants to, I think it wants to um, grab the users in it in a different position. Like when you are used to working with React on the client only, and you want to incorporate them in the show, you know, there's a lot of things you need to learn when you're moving to a framework like Next.js. Yeah. There's so many layers of caching. There is a lot of things to learn about server components and server actions and use server and, you know, you, you know all these things, right? So I think Tenstack Start just wants to give users a little bit of a different experience by combining, like, you know, uh, what we already do on the client and then just sprinkling a little bit of server on top. Awesome, awesome. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about React Advanced. So outside of your... Talk. What are you looking forward to here at React Advanced? Um, yeah, I'm really um, looking forward to Daishi's talk. He's the uh, maintainer of all these uh, client-side state uh, management libraries that uh, I'm using, like Zustand. And uh, yeah, I have a couple of blog posts on, on, on his libraries as well. And he's going to talk about his, uh, his server-side framework, Waku. Very interesting to, to talk to him and yeah, get, to, uh, get, to get his insights on, on the whole topic. Yeah, Waku is very exciting. Yep. And, and it's also a competitor with Next.js App Router. And, Tanstack start, and there's so many of these cool like RSC frameworks coming out. It's a very exciting time when it yeah. comes to framework development. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I think that it needs to have some diversity and not just have one framework that um, is basically, because right now, I still we think conflate server components with like Next.js, because everything is uh, usually Next.js at the moment. But this might change in the future, you know? Oh, I think, it, yeah, it certainly is changing. I mean, you got, uh, Remix Router now with seven. Yep. I think they're eventually going to get to RSC support. Yep. And there's, yeah, there, I think there's, uh, there's Redwood, React Server. There's so many frameworks that are starting to support RSCs. And it's great to see each one kind of has their own different take on how to exactly, do it yeah. the right way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll be very interesting to see how like the Tanstack starts stuff. Because I know, I think Tanner was waiting on React 19 to be finalized, and there's the whole suspense Oh, yeah, stuff. that was my fault, yes. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Okay, yeah. Have Let's you not talk about that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it, oh, we have to, I yeah. guess I have to. Yeah. Has there been any news on that from that you might have heard of? Um, I've seen some PRs about the sibling pre-rendering being maybe reverted, or maybe they want to make it customizable or figure out when it's a good way to do it. But I'm not sure if there's really anything that's been merged back to release candidate yet. Okay. Probably taking, I think, longer than anybody really thought it would take. But yeah, I think it's yeah. been, it was, the change was in there in the core for longer than yeah. we had thought. It, it seems like the decision is not just to revert that change and then ship version 19 and then figure out how to do it later. I think what they're still trying to do is maybe revert it and figure out what's the best way and then ship 19. So that's kind of maybe takes takes a bit longer. And I'm really excited for uh, React 19. There are other things in there that I'm really looking forward to. Um, but yeah, all right. we need to wait a little bit longer than that's it. All right, cool. One of the things we're asking in these interviews is what's making you happy? So what's what's making you happy? What's making me, like in general? In, um, general, in general, anything you yeah, want. So um, of course, uh, spending time with my family. Um, yeah, I see the friendship was, bracelet there. Yeah, my daughter made that. That's <laughs> awesome. So yeah, spending spending time with uh, my wife and the kids, that's uh, something I'm always looking forward to. Uh, my wife actually coming to London uh, oh. today, and we're going to do a little vacation afterwards uh, without the kids, but you know, a uh, little vacation in London, that's going to be great. That's fantastic. How long are you spending? Uh, till Wednesday, so that's like five okay. days. Awesome, great. Yeah. Anything in particular you're looking forward to? Um, yeah, we're going to uh, go to lots of uh, musicals and theaters. Ah. So yeah, going to that. Well, any musical in particular? Like I know there's... 
Um, I think we're going to go to Hamilton. I've, Ooh, I've, seen, oh. I've, I've seen that. It, I've seen the German version of it in Hamburg, and we're going to um, uh, now see the, the the English version of it. So there you go. It's going to be great. Very cool. Awesome. It was great spending time with you, and uh, nice meeting you again. Yeah. Thank you.